let's be realistic. No vehicle does everything for everyone, but there are some that kind of multi-purpose, kind of like a Swiss army knife, depending upon what you need to do with it, it can fulfill a number of needs. And that's why I'm here today in the 2014 Dodge Durango. It's not a minivan, but it has as many seats as some of them. It's not a pickup truck, but it can haul a lot. You can also tow up to 7,200 pounds with it. This top line Citadel is pretty luxurious and you could even get away with calling it a bit of a limousine if you want. And it's great for everyday errands. A little bit bigger than what a lot of people need, but if you're looking at getting separate vehicles for all of that, we have something here where it's all rolled into one. The 2014 Durango isn't all new. It's what manufacturers like to call refreshed with some new features on it. We have new front and rear fascia, so it looks a little bit different. At the back, we have what they call racetrack taillights. Those are the ones that go right across that we originally saw in the Dodge Charger. In this particular version, the Citadel, we have second row captain's chairs, so just two seats for a total of six in this one. Um, a new limited model and all new wheel lineup and a new three spoke steering wheel. We have a choice of two engines. There's a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine that makes 290 horses. Or in this one, we have the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 making 360 horsepower and 390 foot pounds of torque. What's a Hemi? It has to do with the shape of the combustion chambers, which are hemispherical. A little bit more air swirl, gives a better burn, a little bit more power. Other manufacturers have used it, but the Hemi term is now trademarked by Chrysler. Both the engines are hooked to a, a new eight-speed automatic transmission, and it has a dial instead of a lever. That's a new thing with Chrysler. And I have to admit, the first time I heard about it, I wasn't that impressed until I tried it. It actually saves a lot of space in the console, and it's really easy to use. You don't have to look down, don't have to worry about anything, just click, 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 and you're there. All Durangos are all-wheel drive, but the type of system you get depends on what engine you have. On the V6, you get full-time all-wheel drive, and the system is 50-50 front to back all the time. On the V8, it's still full-time all-wheel drive, but it's variable, so the torque will vary front to rear depending upon how it's needed. It starts getting a little slippery, you'll get more to the front of the back as required, and the grip on this is pretty good. We've been driving this in winter weather and on some pretty slippery roads, and it hangs on quite well. It also has a low speed in the transfer case, so you can take it off-road. You can actually get pretty serious in this vehicle. The V6 and the V8 engines are available in just about every trim level, with the exception of the base SXT, which is V6 only, and the RT, which only comes with the V8. They start at $39,995 for the SXT and go up to $51,995 for the Citadel, which is with the V6. You add another $2,300 if you want the V8. Here we have the Citadel with several options, and so we're priced out at $62,355. So this vehicle can get fairly expensive if you want to take it up into that level, but you can also start down around $40,000 if you so choose. When the Durango first came out, it was based on the Dodge Dakota pickup truck, basically just a Dakota with a big body on it. It did the job, it wasn't the prettiest thing, and it was very thirsty, which was one of the complaints that a lot of customers had about it. Fuel economy, of course, now is much better, and the Durango is a unibody. It shares its platform with the Jeep Grand Cherokee, so they're basically siblings under the skin. Same good driving quality, a lot of the same off-road capability, Really, just if you like one, you're gonna like the other. One of the things about SUVs, okay, they're often a little bit bigger than they need to be and a little bit heavier, but they do ride nice. And, and this one especially, you've got a big car feel to this. It's smooth, handling all of the road imperfections very well. And something that the auto manufacturers are realizing is that these things aren't trucks anymore and people don't accept them as trucks anymore. So you can be using this as a family vehicle, and again, you know, towing your boat to the cottage or just going to get the groceries, it's gonna handle most of those jobs very well. Let's look at this Durango realistically. Is it a minivan? No. Is it a pickup truck? No. Is it a luxury sedan? Absolutely not. 
but it can play all those parts. And depending upon what you need in a vehicle, if you're towing to the cottage, but you're also ferrying your children around, you're running off to the grocery store, you're taking it to work, this could very well be the vehicle for you.